Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to do something unique, at least for the channel. I'm going to read a poem. The poem is called The Hound of Heaven by Francis Thompson. The reason I'm going to read this poem is because sometimes we forget the motivational factors that like undergird a lot of the authors and apologists and every other influential thinker that we have, and a lot of it has to do with music, song, and poetry. Well, specifically in our era, I guess it'd be more so song, music, the music that influences the culture, that kind of thing. But I think the one, this one's strongly influential. Really affects me, gives you something to think about. So I'm just going to read it and kind of let it sink in. I'm not going to dissect it too much. Okay, so here we go. I've fled him down the nights and down the days. I've fled him down the arches of the years. I've fled him down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind and in the midst of tears. I hid from him in under running laughter. Up the stayed hopes I sped and shot precipitated down titanic glooms of chasm spheres. From those strong feet that followed, followed after, but with unhurrying chase and unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic insistency, they beat, and a voice beat, more instant than feet, all things betray thee who betrayest me. I pleaded outlaw wise, by many a hearted casement, curtain red, trellised with intertwining charities, for though I knew his love who followed, yet I was sore adread, lest having him I might have naught beside. But if one little casement parted wide, the gust of his approach would clash it too. Fear wist not to evade, as love wist to pursue. Across the margin of the world I fled, and troubled the gold gateways of the stars, smiting for shelter on their clanged bars, fretted to dulcet jars, and silver and chattered the pale ports of the moon. I said to dawn, Be sudden, to eve, be soon. Thy young skied blossoms heaped over me from this tremendous lover. Float thy vague veil about me, lest he see. I tempted all his servitors but to find my trail in their constancy. In faith to him their fickleness to me, their traitorous trueness and their loyal deceit, to all swift things for swiftness did I sue, clung to the whistling mane of every wind, whether they swept smoothly fleet, the long savannas of the blue, or whether thunder-driven they clanged his chariot thwart a heaven, flashy with flying lightnings round the spurn of their feet, Fear was not to evade as love was to pursue. Still with unhurrying chase and an unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic instancy, came on the followed feet, and a voice above their beat, Not shelters thee who wilt not shelter me. I sought no more that after which I strayed, in face of man or maid, but still within the little children's eyes seems something, something that replies, They are at least for me, surely for me. I turned me to them very wistfully, but just as their young eyes grew sudden fair, with dawning answers there, their angel plucked them from me by the hair. Come then, ye other children, nature's share with me, said I, your delicate fellowship. Let me greet you lip to lip, let me twine you with caresses, wantoning, with our lady mother's vagrant tresses, banqueting, but with her wind-walled palace underneath her azure dais, quaffing as your taintless way is, from a chalice, loosened weeping out of the dayspring, so it was done. I and their delicate fellowship was one, drew the bolt of nature's secrecies. I knew all the swift importings on the willful face of skies. I knew how the clouds arise, spumed of the wild sea snortings. All that's born or dies. Rose and drooped with, made them shapers of mine own moods, or wailful or divine. With them joyed and was beraven. I was heavy with the even, when she lit her glimmering tapers round the day's dead sanctities. I laughed in the morning's eyes. I triumphed and I saddened with all weather. Heaven and I wept together, and its sweet tears were salt with mortal mine. Against the red throb of its sunset heart, I laid my own to beat, and share comingling eat. But not by that, by that was eased my human smart. In vain my tears were wet on heaven's gray cheek. Ah, we know not what each other says. These things and I, in sound I speak. Their sound is but their stir, they speak by silences. Nature, poor stepdame, cannot slake my drouth. Let her, if she would owe me, drop yon blue bosom veil of sky and show me the breasts of her tenderness. Never did any milk of hers once bless my thirsting mouth. Nigh, nigh draws the chase with unperturbed pace, deliberate speed, majestic instancy. Past those noised feet, a voice comes yet more fleet. Lo, not the contents thee. Who contents not me. Naked I wait, thy love's uplifted stroke. My harness piece by piece thou hast hewn from me, and smitten me to my knee. I am defenseless utterly. 
I slept, methinks, and woke, and slowly gazing finds me stripped in sleep. In the rash, the lusty head of my young powers, I shook the pillaring hours, and pulled my life upon me, grimed with smears. I stand amid the dust of the mounded years. My mangled youth lies dead beneath the heap. My days have crackled and gone up in smoke, have puffed and burst as sun starts on stream. Yea, faileth now even dream, the dreamer and the lute and the lutinist. Even the linked fantasies, in whom blossomy twist, I swung the earth a trinket at my wrist, are yielding cords of all too weak account, for earth with grief so o'erplussed. Ah, is thy love indeed a weed, albeit a marathine weed, suffering no flowers except its own to mount? Ah, must, designer infinite, ah, must thou char the wood ere thou canst limb with it? My freshness spent its wavering shower in the dust. Now my heart is as broken fount, wherein tear-dripping stagnant split down ever from the dank thoughts that shiver up the sifal branches of my mind such is what is to be the pulp so bitter how shall taste the rind i dimly guess what time is in midst confounds yet ever and, uh, and anon a trumpet sounds from the hid battlements of eternity those shaken mists a space unsettled then round the half glimpsed turrets slowly wash again but not ere him who summoneth i first have seen and wound with glooming robes purpureal cypress crowned his name i know and what his trumpet saith whether man's heart or life it be which yields the harvest must thy harvest fields be dung with rotten death now of that long pursuit comes on hand the brute that voice is round me like the bursting sea and is thy earth so marred shattered and shard on shard lo all things fly thee for thou fliest me strange pity is futile thing wherefore should any set thee love apart Seeing none but I make much of naught, he said, and human love needs human meriting. How hast thou merited? Of all man's clotted clay, the dingiest clot? Alack, thou knowest not how little worthy of any love thou art. Whom wilt thou find to love ignoble thee, save me, save only me? All which I took from thee, but I did take, not for thy harms, but just that thou mightst seek it in my arms. All which thy child's mistake, fanciest as lost, I have stored for thee at home. Rise, clasp my hand, and come. Halt by me, that footfall is my gloom, after all. Shade of his hand, outstretching caressingly. Ah, fondest, blindest, weakest, I am he whom thou seekest. Thou dravest love for thee, who dravest me. So that seems like quite a long poem, but the other one I was going to read was The Ballad of Redding Gale, which is like ten times, maybe not ten times that long, but it's quite long, it's quite long. So this poem specifically motivated or at least partly motivated C.S. Lewis and Tolkien. Francis Schaeffer was a heck of a guy with words, and that's putting it lightly. C certainly better than me. I stumbled over a lot of that, but this is something that I kind of want, maybe not to make a theme, but to have on my channel just to remind, well, mainly my kids, because they're going to be the ones who will kind of take this to heart once I'm gone, because that's something you have to think about when you bring conscious life into the world. They're going to see you depart, or you might see them depart. This is something you really got to keep in mind, and Something like this, a cry of the heart using words specifically, as in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. God uses a metaphor for himself, he uses language, he uses a way to, to, to touch people in relationship, which are which is probably his greatest gift to us. You can express a lot of things through language. It's just so cool. So I'm gonna leave this poem here with you. I'm going to leave a link to it down below so that way you can go read it yourself. I recommend it. It's super solid and probably check out more of Francis Thompson's work as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.